welcome to Gigi's Field, the site of Godzilla 2017. It's the Tuesday Thursday Championship. Le Club de Muscle from Gatineau taking on Top Gun. Dan Mooney alongside Corey Boucher for this one. Corey, the two best teams from Tuesday and Thursday night in the Ottawa Carlton Ultimate Association. Should be a good final. Yeah, it should be a great game. It'll be interesting to see how uh, the win plays into effect. This isn't a normal field for either of these teams, so uh, we'll see how they deal with the new wind here. There will be a swirling wind. There's wind coming off the river here at Gigi's Field. Also, the breeze coming off the Queensway that you can see off in the far distance may play a part in this final. The observers for this one, Jim Robinson and Christiane Marceau. And we're getting set for the opening poll of this Tuesday, Thursday championship. And it will be Le Club de Muscle in red with the opening pull, and we are underway. Top Gun in white, number 24, David Milks. Milks looking deep already. First play, and it's knocked away. Good D there by Sam Dugas for Le Club de Muscle. That's a great D there. He just comes and he takes position, and he uh, just goes and gets that disc. Surprise, surprise, going with the with the hot first play of the game. Yeah, especially with the wind. Uh, they didn't really warm up a lot of those in the pregame, so it's interesting to see. Here's Duga. Le Club de Muscle with their first possession and a, an infraction called immediately. Yeah, that's, that's a pick on the play there. Uh, he just ran right through and ran right through a pretty uh, cluttered stack. So Duga gets the disc, tapped in by Hugo Drouet. Moves it back. Four number 20. And there's a turnover, bad throw, and great field position for Top Gun. All the way back for Pat Lesperance. Lesperance looking around, 10 second stall count. Thierry Bergeron and another stoppage in play. Yeah, there's a call on the field there. It looks like on the original uh, the original throw right from tapping it back in. We'll see what the observer signals here. Number 80 in red, Yannick Boulay. Right there marking Pat Lesperance and they're moving the disc up. Looks like six or seven yards. So again, even better field position with Top Gun about 24 yards out. Yeah, so there would have been a foul called on that play, uh, and he just would have called it because he lost a lot of field position after the catch. There's a the layout attempt there. Great effort by Hugo Drouet off the pass from Amelie Noel de Tilly, and it goes incomplete. And Le Club, Le, Le Club de Muscle gets the disc back once again. Just some great sportsmanship between these two teams right after that uh, that bit in the end zone there. He gets the uh, the high five from the opponent. Just a good show that all these guys know each other and they're all a very good community. Jean-Francois Bourgon. Inside, nice play to keep it alive by Ann Samples. Samples plays that one back. Bourgon. Flips that out for Boule. Yannick Boule. He'll be doing a lot of the handling. Sonia LaBelle moves that up for number 70 and Samples once again. Samples back for LaBelle. The good disc movement. Marie Michelle Cote. Little flip up and a drop there by Sam Duga once again. And this has been a series of turnovers. Good defensive coverage by both teams early on. Yeah, and we see uh, just like that one too, there's not a lot of spin on that throw. The teams are having a little bit of trouble with that wind. It's just going to take them a little bit of time to uh, to get used to it and hopefully pick it up a little. Hugo Drouin moves that one out. Thierry Bergeron sends that up for number 56, Evelyn Massicot Dagenet. She plays it back. The hammer over the top into the hands of Thierry Bergeron for the opening goal of this Tuesday, Thursday final in Godzilla 217. And we see here he's just got all the time and he just looks to the open space, 
Throws the hammer and finds the open receiver. Let's see that opening goal once again if we can get another look. And the hammer didn't, the wind didn't really seem to affect that hammer very much. No, that's right. It was a very uh, crisp pass. And we see here he's got his eyes on the receiver. He knows what he wants. And then he just really puts a lot into that throw to keep it nice and crisp and straight. So Top Gun, Bergeron in the end zone. He gets the opening goal of this 2017 Godzilla Tuesday Thursday championship let's talk a little bit about the history of Godzilla Corey I mean this goes back to the early 80s uh, yeah it does and that's one of the things um, one of the hidden gems about Okua is actually there they have a lot of history that not everybody knows um, but like a lot of people who have been here and played in a lot of these games um, have really built up quite a storied uh, storied event here for the finals and the disc goes out, so it will come out to the brick, which is the 40-yard line. It's 20 yards from the goal line at the UPI, which is Ultimate Parks International. There's actually a brick in the ground. <laughs> That's a, a very old rumor there, Dan. <laughs> uh, what we see here is white, uh, the white team, which is the top gun are putting on a zone defense. They're looking to make, as we see there in the benefits, they're looking to make the Club de Musclet make a lot of passes before they can advance up the field. Eric Shear with the D. And again, Top Gun. Moving it out. Mark Thompson now, the veteran. Thompson loses control. Huno Genet. Patrice Huno Genet. Flips that out. And a brand new set of bodies out there. Philippe Lefebvre. With the disc now. Nice little flip for Frederick Allery. Allery, nice toss, great defensive play there by number 30, Gord Warwick. It's a great play, he just takes, uh, as we can see here in the replay, he takes the inside track. Uh, he reads the thrower's eyes the whole way and he knows it's coming and he actually gets around the defender. It's a great play. Big huck into the end zone again. Nobody can come up with it. Little joust there from Ryan Katz-Rosen and Francois Rodrigue in the end zone. It comes out to the goal line and Le Club, Le Club de Musclet has it once again. Number 84, Stephanie Gratton moves that up for Lefebvre. Nice grab by Patrice Huneau Genet. He's looking downfield quickly. Couldn't find the open man. Allery. Allery. A little flip over for Lefebvre. Lefebvre looking into the end zone. Elects to go back to the outside. Picked up there by Justine Blair. Blair. Ten yards out now. It's Allery. Frederick Allery moves it along for Lefebvre. Lefebvre now. Looking for the open man, sends it into the end zone. It's up and down. It's one apiece now as Le Club de Musclet ties it up. As you can see here, he really fakes the mark a lot to get him moving, and then he just has that break throw wide open. It's a great take as well. Patrice Huneau Genet gets the tie or gets the opening goal for Le Club de Musclet. They play out of Gatineau and are the Gatineau and Okua leagues merged now or, or is Gatineau just part of Okua? Um, I mean Gatineau uh, in a lot of ways is actually just sort of part of Ottawa now um, but uh, they also they don't have any leagues that are that close to them so a lot of their players come over here to participate in uh, recreational leagues during the week and actually some of the competitive teams as well. You can be very busy playing ultimate, can't you? <laughs> you could play eight days a week if you wanted to. Yeah, there's probably some place you could play. Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, and Wednesday in Okua. And the pole once again stays in play. And Top Gun starts on the offense. 
So we see uh, here, we see the Club de Musclet electing to play a man defense, and it actually pays off for them there. They made the um, Top Gun make a lot of short throws, and they couldn't handle it in the wind. Nice job to stay, and Sophie LaBelle with the hammer. Nice defensive play there. Number 38, Pat Lesperance getting a hand on it, and Lesperance goes deep into the hands of Evelyn Massicot Dagenet. Dagenet, and a drop there. Thierry Bergeron, who came up with the opening goal for Top Gun, just unable to hang on. LaBelle. Little flip out for Yannick Boulay. Boulay looking deep. Just beyond the outstretched hands of Ann Semples. And another turnover. So if you see here, it's a great throw. Um, but just because of the wind, it just dips a little bit at the end there. And she doesn't account for it. And unfortunately, it goes uncompleted. Great look from our end zone camera. And another great defensive play there, Samuel Duga. And now... It's Yannick Boulay and Le Club de Musclet looking to score and take their first lead of the game. Into the end zone. Great catch there by Sonia LaBelle. And it's 2-1 Le Club de Musclet. Yeah, it was a, it's a great end zone play there. Uh, they just isolated the one player and just kind of let her run back and forth until her defender got, uh, got into a bad position. Um, we've seen the teams be a little bit sloppy here. But uh, they seem to think, they seem to be looking at really aggressive uh, throws and really aggressive areas. So hopefully that'll bode well for the rest of the game. Sonia LaBelle, Daphne Ellison, Yannick Boulay, and Philippe Lefebvre will also be playing in the Tuesday Thursday final. Wow. Busy, busy. Yeah, uh, and that's one of the things, uh, like you mentioned earlier, there's so many nights for Okiwa that you can play on a couple, and uh, we sometimes have players who are on both teams, even in the finals, show up and have to choose between which group of friends they're going to play with. Ryan Katz-Rosen will also be playing in the Tuesday-Thursday final. Or the Monday-Wednesday final, thank you. Disc stays in play, so Top Gun starting out from their own end zone. Eric Shear for Ryan Katz Rosan. Nice lead there for Katz Rosan. Rosan moves that up. Nice play for Emily Noel de T. Nice forehand, Hugo Drouin. Noel did CE into the end zone. And boy, Top Gun made that one look easy. They sure did, Dan. Um, they just, uh, the Clifton Musclay never seemed like they were really set on defense. And Top Gun really took advantage of that. It's just shredding through the middle and then finding a wide open receiver in the end zone at the end there. Laura Ferris with the goal, give the assist to uh, Emily Noel did CE. And it's two apiece here in this Tuesday-Thursday final. Now, the caliber on Tuesday and Thursday is not nearly as high as the Monday-Wednesday. Most of the elite ultimate players play in the Monday-Wednesday Monday, Wednesday league, correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, it unfortunately works out a lot of the times that most of the competitive teams in the area will always practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So the because of that, the Tuesday-Thursday league tends to be a lot more of the high-level league players and the uh, semi or mostly retired competitive players. So the people who are really sort of uh, shaping the sport in Ottawa tend to play a little bit more on the Monday and the Wednesday. So tuesday Thursdays more recreational. I wouldn't tell these teams that. <laughs> No, certainly when you're out there, it's all serious business for certain. So we have an offside call there. Uh, the observer on the left signaling that the team, one of the uh, team members in white stepped over the line before the disc was actually pulled from the receiver's hand. So they just do it again? Yeah, they're going to do it again. Uh, this is their warning. So if they do it one more time, there will be a yardage penalty, uh, exactly like football in the kickoff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not something that either team wants, especially with uh, the wind being at a premium here. Who is, who's in favor at this point 
Uh, it uh, It's going to be Le Club de Mousclay moving west to east right now. Who has an advantage? Uh, we've seen a lot of our points in the end zone um, to our left, which would be east to west. I'm not sure that that is a matter of anything other than just sort of turnovers close to your own end zone. Uh, but we have seen a lot of good disc movement both ways, so it's still tough to tell. Dugas to the outside for Sonia LaBelle. So here we see that zone again from Top Gun. And it's just trying to smother everything that uh, the Club de Muscle can muster here on the easy sideline. Go out to the outside. Marie-Michel Cote. Philippe Lefebvre. Back for Yannick Boulet. Boulet to the sideline for Sonia LaBelle. Sonia LaBelle, that pass intercepted by number 24, Dave Milks. Milks gets it to the outside, and now Top Gun goes on the offense looking to retake the lead. Amelie Noel de T for David Milks. Milks into the end zone, that one. Didn't really have much of a hope of getting into the intended receiver's hands. He's had, a, he's had a couple tough ones on those hucks. I think he's trying not to put it at the back, and he's just sort of uh, under-throwing the disc a little bit too much. Alex Demers for Boulet. Boulet inside. Lefebvre. Sonia LaBelle back for Lefebvre. And Lefebvre just... He'd like to have that one back. If that was on a string, he'd be pulling that back into his hand. <laughs> I think that's where most hockey players would look at the rafters there, Dan. Yep. Milks. Milks looking deep once again. And again, that huck attempt goes unrewarded. It's just another underthrow there, Dan. He keeps trying to... Uh Keeps trying to take a little bit off it just with the wind and it's throwing him off. Le Club de Mousclay with a huck of their own. That one turned away. So the wind really playing a factor in this. The disc is starting to sail. Yeah, when you don't put a lot of spin on it uh, and it's not really a crisp throw, the disc will do that little motion thing where it kind of pops up and down while it's in flight. And it makes it really tough on the receiver because a lot of times those pops will be happening while you're trying to watch it into your hands. Tebow. Denis Tebow has the disc turned away. Nice play by Philippe Lefebvre. Lefebvre and Le Club de Mousclay looking to cash in on this turnover. Boulet over the middle into the hands of Sonia LaBelle. 3 2. Le Club de Mousclay. Just a, a great play there. Um, they picked up the disc. They weren't set in their end zone, but they just go ahead and move the disc so well. Uh, and they look to use that break side a lot. The, uh, the marks here from Top Gun should be putting a little bit more pressure on the Club de Mousclay just so that those throws are a little bit harder. And with this wind, hopefully they'll be able to play as the extra defender. Looks to be a pretty lethal combination for Le Club de Mousclay. Boulet to LaBelle. That's their second tandem goal. LaBelle's second goal, Boulet's second assist. Yeah, these are two of the, the players that we'll look to see uh, gets even more involved in the offense as the time goes on. Um, they're both very strong players, and especially with this wind, you want people with the disc who are a little bit more uh, reliable and a little bit more sturdy. So now Top Gun. Getting set to get the disc back. Trailing 3-2. to two. They opened the scoring. Le Club de Mousclay came back to take a 2-1 lead. Top Gun tied it at two. And Le Club de Mousclay just regained the lead with a nice pass from Boulet to Sonia LaBelle. It's 3-2. Now, is this a 95-minute hard cap? Yeah, uh, the game is to 15, uh, and the game is going to end at 8.15, um, regardless of the score, as long as it hasn't been to 15, just because we have the second final as well, and uh, we want to keep everybody on schedule here. Thompson looking deep 
He's got a couple of men into the hands of Thierry Bergeron for his second goal of the game, and the Huck finally works for Top Gun. Yeah, and I think Mark Thompson played this really well. He knew, uh, again, using that break side, he knew that he was going to be able to throw his player open. And he actually, the, the receiver, I was a little worried there for a second because the receiver almost milked it too much, even though he was already way in the end zone. And then he finally makes the catch at the end there to score the point. 3-3. Three, three. Back and forth here. And was this the kind of match you were expecting, or was one team favored over the other coming into this one? Uh, these are both strong clubs. A lot of these players have played uh, competitive some point uh, recently, within the last three years at least for almost all of them. Uh, we were expecting a pretty solid showing, especially because these teams have been together as a group for, for quite a while now. Uh, and they've both been, if not here in Godzilla every year, they've been near the top every year. Le Club de Mousquet with a 9-0 and record regular season. Top Gun. 11 and 1 so two really good sides here in the Tuesday Thursday final a hundred and thirty five goals for and seventy one against for Le Club de Mousquet probably not used to too many of these close matches uh, no, especially because Top Gun has about 30 more goals scored on them. There are a few more games, um, but if you're letting 30 goals get scored on you in two games, you're not winning those games. Um, so it's interesting to see the plus-minus difference between the two teams. Number 38, Pat Lesperance with the D and the turnover. And Top Gun go into offensive mode 15 yards out. Warwick. Gord Warwick. Sends it back out to the middle of the field. Lesperos into the end zone. For number 54, Lauren Ellis, and it's 4-3 Top Gun. That's twice now that uh, Le Club de Musclet has really gotten burned on letting those breaks out. The last point we saw the huck from Mark Thompson, and this point uh, you just get the throw off the sideline, and then it's a really easy break to a wide-open cutter in the end zone. And the key to that one was moving the disc to the middle of the field, opening up everything. And Les Barras had no problem finding Lauren Ellis. Yeah, and Lauren's one of those threats. Uh, she's hard. She's really hard to cover as a defender, and especially when your team is giving up the break side, it's really difficult to try and cover her both sides. She's just so quick. 4-3 Top Gun. They scored 171 goals over the course of the regular season in 12 games allowed 102 but uh, pretty significant plus minus difference of 69 I think they'd be quite pleased with that <laughs> yes they would um, and especially it's interesting to see that even though they gave up a higher number of goals uh, it's because they were able to score more which leads to exciting games because it's really back and forth Rodrigue for Patrice you know Genet. Flipped out for Bourgon. Back out, Stephanie Gretel into the middle. Back out for Huno Genet. Oh, and a drop. Tough drop by Alex Demers. And now Top Gun has an opportunity to expand on their lead. Katz Roseanne. Looking deep. And this one will not stay in the field of play, so it's another turnover. And that one, uh, unfortunately for Ryan, was never in, so he threw it, he stepped out of bounds, and he threw it from out of bounds, and it never came back into the field of play. So they'll actually get possession of the disc where he was throwing from. So how quickly the tide can turn, and now Le Club de Mousquet into the end zone, another great defensive play there by number 58. Laura Ferris and she breaks up the play and it heads downfield for the potential huck and an expected cutter in the guise of Ryan Katz Roseanne never really made it to the spot the disc was delivered to. No, it's unfortunate too because they had such a nice uh, a nice D there at the end zone. That's a great second effort. Comes up empty. Here's Milks. Milks. 
Looking for Ferris in the end zone. She's got it! That's a, uh, a great throw from Dave Milks. He's had a bit of uh, a bit of trouble moving west to east, but we see east to west here. He just throws a backhand and there's no problem. He leads his cutter and it's right to the side that uh, she's wide open on. It's a nice track too, because if she's going the other way, the sun would have been in her eyes. This way it's at her back and it's, uh, it's a non-issue. So Ferris with her second goal on a great hook from Milks. And it's now five to three for Top Gun. And that's, they're on a bit of a run here right now, Corey. Uh, three in a row, three points in a row. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to string that together because um, a lot of times you go out and the other team has a set offense. And what you're trying to do is disrupt that. And it's often hard to go out there and get a turnover and let alone score the point. Uh, but they managed to do that a couple of times in a row here. So let's see if they can keep hot and see if they can keep the pressure on here. So Top Gun in the driver's seat early in this one against Le Club de Mousclay from Gatineau. That will go out and the disc will come out to the brick. Cool night too, the low expected tonight just six degrees so probably the best place to be is out on the field running around <laughs> so the players on the sidelines certainly feel that way as well but yes it's once you get out there and you get running you don't really notice as much the weather you'll notice the wind in your throws and stuff but you won't really notice it in terms of the temperature Boulay to the outside for Sonia LaBelle LaBelle back for Boulay so what, um, what Top Gun is doing here is they're putting that zone on again and they're throwing four people into the cup. So they're really looking for passes like that where the Club de Musclet has to lose a lot of yards and they can't get around that middle guy. His job is to make sure that that break doesn't come out across the field and hit the far sideline. LaBelle, the lefty, moves that up and samples, samples to the sideline for Justin Blair. Lafay. In for Boulay. Boulay to the outside for LaBelle. LaBelle. Great. Left handed hammer into the end zone and a diving grab gets Le Clip de Musclet back within one. And they really needed that there, Dan. Um, as you can see, they really worked it up the field. And if we look at the replay here, she really has all the time to throw this throw and she makes sure that she puts it where her receiver can just go and make a play on it. Uh, and he makes a great. Uh, dive there just to make sure that the disc stays up. Frederick Ellery with the goal makes it 5-4. So it'll be interesting to see. We've seen a lot of points uh, scored in this west end zone still. Uh, it'll be interesting to see as the sun goes down if that changes a little bit with the wind. Wind blowing across the field as we sit. But if you look at the ends, the flags on the goalposts on the uprights seem to be swirling a bit. So there's really no set I idea as to how the wind is going to affect the disc once it's in the air. Warwick, Gord Warwick. Looking deep. 10 second stall count, moves it up for David Milks. Milks looking deep for Thompson. Can he catch up to it? Yes, he can. He's got a player in the end zone. He's had a couple in the end zone. They move that out and Thompson gets it back. And Top Gun scores again. Thompson from Gord Warwick and it's Six to four. And we see here, it's just a great huck. Um, there's been a lot that have been underthrown. This is just perfectly leads the cutter, hits him in stride, and the defense is never fully able to recover. It's just a one-two punch from there. So Thompson with his first goal, his second point of this Tuesday-Thursday final. He's got a goal and an assist for Top Gun. They lead 6-4. 
And as this game progresses, as you see Thompson talking to his biggest fan right there. <laughs> as this game moves forward, the larger the lead, the more difficult it is to come back from. Exactly, especially with a game like this, a lot of the points really take a long time to score because you do see that zone, uh, especially from Top Gun. And because of the zone, it really slows down the rate you're able to score. So as, as the time ticks off that clock, um, you're still going to have chances to score, but it won't be as quick, and you won't be able to get those points and get back in the game quite as fast. Thompson restores the two-goal lead for Top Gun. Top Gun in white, Le Club de Musclet in red. Boulet, 10 yards out, starts it up for Allery. Yannick Boulet. For Allery once again, Allery. Aaron Toss, intending that for Justin Blair, and it goes for naught. And now Top Gun with an opportunity to expand on their two goal advantage. Nice throw there and a great save by Eric Shear. Drouin. Hugo Drouin drops that back for Ferris. Laura Ferris and another stoppage. Pick somewhere, Corey? Yeah, I believe it was upfield. I think it's on uh, Yannick Boulay's guy. And it's important there, especially around the end zone, that you call those picks um, because you can't really let your defender get away for free, especially the way that Top Gun has been using the break throws so far, Dan. Good time to call a timeout to get your defensive team off the field, put your offensive team on, and hopefully get that three-goal advantage. Yeah, and that's uh, that's one thing that I really like about the AUDL is that they use uh, the timeouts a little bit more like basketball where you can kind of sub your players, and I think it makes the timeouts worth more. Here, um, they don't actually get to change, which is unfortunate. I wish that was a rule. It's nice sometimes when you're on the field. Um, but here, they're just going to kind of come up with a plan of attack and use their defensive line uh, to try and score a point here. Change only allowed in the event of an injury. Yes. Um, they try and keep it a little bit more... Um, you know, the players that start the point end the point, obviously, unless there's uh, an injury called. So let's see what they, uh, they set up here. They seem to be going with a vertical stack, uh, likely going to isolate the front player and just let him kind of run against his defender and see what uh, Le Club de Musclet gives them. We'll see, though. They might have a set play coming off of potentially the back here. Laura Ferris. Just touched in by LaBelle. Ferris, little forehand for Thierry Bergeron. Little flip inside for number 56, Evelyn Massicot Dagenet. And again, Top Gun turned away by tight defense by Le Club de Musclet. Nice play by Justin Blair to keep that one alive. Back inside, Allery. Allery for Boulet. Boulet. Blair. Back for Lefebvre. Lefebvre looks to send it downfield with the huck for Boulet. And Boulet comes back and a nice feed from Allery. Here's LaBelle, Sonia LaBelle. LaBelle back for Boulet. Lays out and keeps it alive. Boulet looking for the huck once again. Nice little toss. In for Lefebvre, back for Boulet. Boulet fakes the hammer, goes it back to the outside for LaBelle. LaBelle, left-handed toss. Lefebvre. Leclerc de Musclet, four yards out, into the end zone. Nice play by Allery. Makes the catch just as he's running out of bounds but he got a foot in and it's now 6-5 so as 
we can see on the replay here, Dan, um, Ryan Katzor is in, is just stuck on the sideline. He even puts his hand up to say to his cutters, you know, you're not giving me a lot to look at here. And that actually gets his player in motion to come and make the open cut for the goal. Frederick Allery's second goal of the game. Philippe Lefebvre, second assist. And Le Clique de Mousclay back within a goal here in this Tuesday, Thursday championship final. Godzilla 2017, the championship evening for the Ottawa Carlton Ultimate Association. Dan Mooney alongside Corey Boucher, so pleased to have you along for the ride. This has been a good one right from the opening pull, and I don't foresee it being any different all the way in. Uh, no, I don't either, and that's the nice thing about a, like a 6-5 game is that they have so much time to claw that point back that it doesn't have to be, it's not like a do-or-die situation here. They, they do have time to kind of wait and see when the right moment to break is. Le Club de Mousclay with an absolutely overwhelming regular season division victory all the way down deep nice d there by number 78 daphne ellison stephanie gretzow moves it in and another turnover here right through the hands of samuel Zugo. Milks into the end zone, into the hands of Ryan Katz Roseanne. Once again, Top Gun's two goal lead is restored. This is a great, um, a great play by Top Gun to really kind of benefit on that turnover. And then we see Dave Milks here really just step out and just throw around his mark like he's not even there. Uh, and it gives his cutter just a wide open lane to look and it gives him the whole field to use. First goal of this Tuesday, Thursday championship for Ryan Katz Roseanne. And when we were talking before the match even started, uh, Corey, you mentioned that uh, Katz Roseanne would be one of the players to watch on Top Gun. Certainly uh, the kind of guy that, as a catalyst, he's one of the big guys that comes to play every game. And in a final, your best players have to be your best players. And, and he's proving it. Well, I, I can't say it better myself uh, there, Dan. I find uh, whenever I've seen Ryan play, I played against him. Um, he's always a very dynamic player. He's never really a handler or a cutter. He's kind of both. And he's very often a safety valve for a lot of players. So as long as they never get to those high stall counts, it really takes a lot of the pressure off of the offense. And that's just something he can do being such a good player. Seven to five. Top Gun, one point away from the halftime break. Leading Le Club de Mousclay by 7 to 5 here at Gigi's Field. Boulet back for Marie Michelle Cote. She dishes off. And a big huck attempt here. The disc starting to sail goes up grabbed there by Francois Rodrigue Rodrigue looking into the end zone looking for some support find Sonia LaBelle and Dan that's just a great play there uh, just a really great play from uh, Francois he he knows he's got the two cutters coming the two defenders coming at him he takes his time he reads the disc and he goes up and he takes it as high as he can just to limit the defender's ability to make a play on this disc. And then it's just nothing but patience. He watches his cutters, he moves his cutters, and as soon as he sees them go where he wants, he just hits them with the disc. Six to 66. For goal number six for Le Clay. Yeah, and they, uh, they're not quite as much of a, a one-trick pony, if you will, as Top Gun. They seem to have a lot more of the stats spread out, um, really, which is interesting to see because of that. It's more of a, a team effort, and that way you're not relying on one or two players to really carry your offense. And now Le Club de Mousclay getting set. For the after goal pull, Patrice Uno Genet. And again, that will come out to the brick. 
No, it landed in. It came right back in, three yards deep into the Top Gun end zone. <laughs> Not something that Gord Warwick was expecting. No, and now he's got uh, almost stuck on that sideline because none of his cutters were actually uh, ready to cut off of that pull. Tabo going deep. The disc is sailing. Here's the jump ball, and it's batted away. Hugo Drouet going up for it, losing that battle. Demers. Flip to the outside, back to Graton. Graton. Finds the open man. Nice play by Milks to break up that play. That looks like he called the timeout there, uh, which is a good play. Uh, there's something in Frisbee we talk about, the conservation of greatness. And uh, it usually means that once you've made a fantastic play, that you're about to throw it away in a really bad way. So it's probably a good call for the timeout there from Dave Milks. And Dave Milks, a big guy out there, but showing his effectiveness with the quickness. And his quickness broke up that play. Yeah, he takes a, a great line to it. He takes a really great line to that disc. And one thing that makes it uh, really easy for him is that he's looking at the thrower's eyes for most of the way. So he's really able to kind of come in and uh, take the right lane on it to make a, a great play. Here's another look at that D from Milks. So we see the, uh, the thrower actually does a pretty good job of not just keeping his eyes on the cutter, but he doesn't see the field. He doesn't see Milks in a really good spot to come in and make that D. So again, Great field position for Top Gun as they try to take advantage of the turnover. Looking on the sidelines, Ryan Katzrozen has got his arm around Yannick Boule. These players may be playing on different teams, but they know each other very well. Yeah, and that's one thing. Uh, there's quite a few uh, Gatineau representatives on both of these teams here, and they're doing uh, the people who play together on a lot of different teams over the, the uh, course of a year. So they, a lot of them have been teammates in the past and will be teammates again in the future. And there's the halftime break on the catch from Lauren Ellis, her second goal from Denise Bo. And we're at 8-6, and we're at the halftime break. What a first half it's been with Top Gun surprising the undefeated Le Clip de Mousclay from Gatineau here in the Tuesday Thursday championship. We'll take a break and be back with more. You're watching the 2017 Godzilla Championships on Rogers TV. Gabriel Pizza, proud supporter of local sports. Gabriel Pizza, home of the bigger, better pizza. 310-7777 or gabrielpizza.com. For 25 years, you've been helping to make our roads safer by doing the right thing. You've been the designated driver. You've stayed over, called home. You've called a cab or a friend and planned ahead. Let's keep doing the right thing. Support sober driving by getting yourself and your friends home safely. Do the right thing. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. Uninterrupted coverage of speeches from Ottawa's business leaders, visionaries, and social figures. Watch new episodes of Podium at its new time, Tuesdays at 9.30 p.m., exclusively on Rogers TV. This and it's going to materialize here. Shumilevsky, shot scores! Shot scores! What a shot! 67's action on Rogers TV. Celebrate Ottawa is a collection of stories for, by, and about the people, places, and rich history that make Ottawa such a vibrant place to call home. Tune in Sunday evenings at 7.30. Welcome back to Gigi's Field here 
for the 2017 Godzilla Championships, emblematic of the Ottawa Carlton Ultimate Association Supremacy, Dan Mooney, Corey Boucher, and our entire Rogers TV crew. So happy to have you along for the ride. Top Gun leading Le Club de Mousclay here in the Tuesday-Thursday championship by a score of 8-6 at the half. Pretty close half, but Top Gun, uh, despite the fact that Le Club de Mousclay coming into this final undefeated, have really taken the game to them. Yeah, and it's interesting to see um, that a point does actually separate these two teams. We've seen a lot of similar things come from both teams. We've both seen a couple bad turnovers to each side, and we've both seen some really great hucks even with this wind. And the wind has been swirling, and there's really, there's no way that you can get used to what the wind is doing because once the disc is in the air, it's at the mercy of the wind. Yeah, exactly. You just kind of have to try and limit as, uh, the exposure as much as you can and make your throws with lots of spin and put them really crisp, and they'll, they'll stay about as true as you can get them to go. Well, Fred Couples always said that the wind doesn't affect a good golf shot, so maybe the same thing applies here. And if uh, Fred Couples has given me any advice on golf, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. So... We see uh, players in the sidelines here. You can just see them in the bottom of the screen. They're just throwing. They're trying to stay warm uh, on the sidelines, especially a few of these longer points. It's really tough to kind of stay ready to go in there and, and run around the whole point. Um, so you got to try and stay warm on the sideline however you can. Le Club de Mousclay in red. They will receive the disc off this second half opening pole. And we're underway once again. Top gun in white. Le Club de Mousclay in red. Top Gun leads 8-6. Stephanie Gretton moves that around for Allery. Allery to the near side. Sam Dugas with it. Back for Patrice Uno Genet. Here's Justin Bled. And a turnover once again. So Top Gun looking to cash in quick. Here's the huck into the hands of Ferris. One yard out. Ferris looking for some help. Ferris into the end zone. The disc sails. And finally, number 56, Evelyn Masaka Dajina able to hang on to the disc. And it's now 9-6 Top Gun. And that's exactly what Top Gun wanted coming out of the half. They wanted to come out, and especially because uh, they were going to get the disc, they wanted to come out in offense and have a strong possession. Laura Ferris here definitely looked a little worried. A lot of her cutters weren't really giving her much to work with. And then finally she has uh, Mascot get open in the end zone for her. And luckily, the first jump didn't uh, impede her second effort. 9-6. Now, the situation becoming a little bit more dire for Le Club de Mousclay, a 9-0 regular season record, dominating the closest team to them, had six wins and three losses in their division. Nobody could touch them. They walked through the regular season, and now this is probably the first bit of adversity they faced as a team all season long. Yeah, especially uh, if you look at their plus minus, Dan, like they're so, uh, like they're over, like over 60 goals plus at that point is four full games worth more of points than your opponents, uh, which doesn't exactly speak to a lot of close games in their division. This might be the first uh, uh, equal or maybe even potentially better team that they've faced all year. Yannick Boulay. And again, we see Top Gun here go with that zone. Uh, they're sending four into the cup just because they really want to keep the disc. Uh, they want to keep the disc horizontal, and they really want to keep it moving where they want the disc to go and take away all the space on the far side. Jean-Francois Bourgon out there. Moves it for Marie-Michelle Cote, and looks like she may have turned her ankle. Looks like we have an injury called here. Um, we'll see. Hopefully she's okay. She's got a teammate running over to check on her. It looks like it's just an ankle. Hopefully it's nothing worse than that. We'll see her out there next point. The surface is absolutely pristine. The field turf. And would this be something there on the stop? There you see it. Yeah. 
just that little twinge of the knee. And sometimes it's just a little temporary thing. You just want to get off the field, and then you'll be good to go for the next point as well. Yannick Boulay now as Le Club de Musclet attempts to chip away at this three-goal Top Gun lead. Flip out by Rodrigue. Graton. There's Bourgon. Nice play there by Denis Thibault. And Top Gun gets the disc back. Milks tries to go deep, and he goes right into the rib cage of Jean-Francois Bourgon, and that one hurt. Uh, yeah, he's down here. Um, it looks like he's about to be okay. There is no real infraction on the play, and it's a low stall count, uh, if anything. So there's no real uh, change in the play that's going to happen here. But he steps across, and he goes to throw, and the player Ooh. just kind of steps in, and he just sort of hooks it back at that last second and catches him right in the ribs. It's, he's staying in here, and we've started the play again. Back come Top Gun. Hugo Drouin. Back for it. Thibault. And there's a drop by Milks. And a turnover here for Le Club de Musclé, Yannick Boulet. Looking for an open cutter. Finds Lefebvre. Philippe Lefebvre, a little flip over the top, and that one goes through the hands of Ann Simples. Top Gun gets the disc back. The team's just trading possessions here. It's getting a little bit sloppier uh, as the players begin to tire, and we'll see how that affects the rest of the game. Drouin. Looking for some support. Goes all the way deep into the hands of number 36, Mark Thompson, at the goal line, but the call may come back. Oh, the refs are deliberating here. We'll see what the call is. There's a foul called. It looks to be on a cutter up the field rather than the thrower. We have a discussion here. We might see the refs go off to the side, or the uh, observers go off to the side. She seems to be wanting to let it go with the player's call, and it looks like it's a contested foul, and the disc will be coming back to the thrower. It's, uh, that's unfortunate for Top Gun because they've been attempting to huck most of this championship final. It's worked a couple of times, but that one worked beautifully, finding Mark Thompson at the one-yard line. Yeah, it actually ended up being uh, a great throw, especially out of desperation, um, because he really didn't have a lot, and he had a high stall count, so he just tried to get it down the field. Mark Thompson made a great play to go get it. Unfortunately, there was a, a foul that happened, and we see another huck right here. Oh, to Drew in the end zone. And it's now 10 to 6 for Top Gun. So we saw uh, Dave Milk specifically, but a lot of these players have some trouble with the wind early on, especially on those hucks. Uh, a lot of them were getting underthrown and making it easy for the defender to get there. And now it really seems like Dave Milks has dialed in. Uh, he's getting the hucks exactly where he wants. He's leading his cutters, and he's really uh, pushing them for extra yards into the end zone. The teams have traded points for the most part during this championship final with the exception of one three-goal run by Top Gun, which really separated the two teams and allowed them to pull away. They had a two-goal advantage. Uh, Le Club de Mousselet came back, chipped away at it, but they could never really get closer than just one goal away. They couldn't make Top Gun make that mistake that would allow them to tie things up. Yeah, and uh, the thing there for Club de Musclé is that they, they had the disc. They got a, not necessarily a D, but they got a, a really bad turnover from Top Gun, probably about the 35, 40 yard line, and they failed to capitalize on it. And that's something that if they're going to come back into this game, the Club de Musclé really needs their D line to uh, pick it up on offense because they're getting the chances. They're just not punching it in, and they're not going to win unless they can claw some points back here out of Top Gun. Good pull. Picked up by Patrice Uno Genet. Frederic Allery for Uno Genet. Uno Genet. Nice grab there by number 78, Daphne Ellison. Daphne Ellison moves that up for Samuel Dugot. 
Marie Michelle Cote. Into the hands of Uno Genet. And there's a great play by Allery to keep it alive. Now he's going for the huck and the D. Batted away nicely there. Thierry Bergeron made the D and Top Gun gets the disc back. I'm, I'm actually a little bit disappointed. It was, a, it was a good enough throw from the, the handler that Dugard really has a chance to come in and make a play on this disc. And I think if he was a little bit more aggressive on his cut, he really would have been able to get a better spot and he wouldn't have had so much trouble with the defender on that huck. Bergeron. Drops it off. Warwick to the outside. Another big huck looking deep. Too far for Eric Shear. Just another kind of wasted possession there from Top Gun. Um, they have had a few where they've been a little bit um, like making some bad decisions and they really turn the disc over quickly. And of course, as I say that, we see the Club de Musclé kind of give it right back to them at an even better field position. So we'll see what happens. Gordon Warren sends that out. Nice play inside for Thierry Bergeron. Bergeron unmarked. Finds Evelyn Massicot. Massicot, little throw over the top to the goal line for Warwick. Now Warwick. And a foul called and injured on the play. Marie Michelle Cote, she's holding her left shoulder as she walks off. Uh, yeah, and it's something you don't want to see the injuries. There's been a couple injuries now um, We do get a switch here, uh, so it's not just an injury to stop the play. It's actually an injury to sub the player um, She is looking like she's having a bit of trouble still on that sideline As we can hopefully see oh right there in the end zone. She gets uh, Tangled up with her her mark there and she kind of comes right in and gets a shoulder right in her shoulder So hopefully it's nothing lasting and it's just a uh, a little bump that'll wear off. Well, she's still on the sidelines and now getting uh, attention from several of the members of Le Club de Musclé. There you see her. Just trying to move that shoulder around. And if she's able to move it at all, it's probably a very good sign. Uh, yeah, I would say if anything here, it's uh, it's likely it's just kind of a bruise. There's a lot of tissue up there that really you can feel the sting, but there's not uh, too much lasting damage. Hopefully that's the case. Uh, I've had a shoulder injury in my past, and I can tell you my shoulder did not look like that after I got hit. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've seen a few gruesome ones myself in my time, and uh, she doesn't look any worse for wear. It might be a little sore and stiff tomorrow, but... Uh, Actually, she's enough of a competitor that she may be back in this one before it's over. Yeah, and that's that's one thing that a lot of the players uh, here, like even though it's a recreational league, a lot of these players come out to play hard and they play to win. And it's uh, something that they really want to put their best foot forward on the field. On the goal line, here's Gord Warwick. Warwick, a little flip inside for Pat L'Esperance, and it's now 11-6, Top Gun. We're starting to see a little bit of frustration come here from uh, Le Club Musclé, uh, Le Club de Musclé, excuse me, um, because their defensive sets are not working as well as they should, and that player just gets beat really easily on an upline there. Um, that's not what you want to see when your club is down, especially when you were down 10-6 uh, going into that point, and you can start to feel maybe a little bit here the... Uh, the trophy slipping away a little. Another three goal run for Top Gun gives them a five point lead and it's slowly slipping through the fingers of Le Club de Musclé. There you see Laura Ferris on the sidelines with the blue hat. Number 28, Thierry Bergeron trying to stay warm. <laughs> At this point, uh, in case you can't see it, fans, the sun is is getting down it's a little bit of that red tinge for the sun the sunset but these players are really starting to feel that cold because the dark of, uh, of the evening is coming on and a low of six degrees expected tonight uh, wasn't much of a summer and we're now in autumn it would appear yes september is uh is coming in with a bang and not a whimper 
Top Gun. Getting ready for their after goal pull. We got Dave Milks here with the disc. He's been uh, one of their players who's been throwing a lot of the hucks, a lot of their deep looks, and let's see what kind of pull he gets here, see if he can keep it in bounds. Looks like this one will indeed stay in bounds, pushing Philippe Lefebvre 10 yards deep inside his own end zone. Boulay to the outside for Sonia LaBelle. This is what we've seen a lot of as well, um, is that zone out of Top Gun. They're really forcing the Club de Musclé to play a lot on this sidelines, and they're, they've been kind of getting out of it as we see another huck here. This is how they've been getting out of that play. This one comes back into the field of play and batted away by Mark Thompson, the veteran, just knowing exactly where he needed to go. Yeah, he does a really good job, and he's been doing this for quite a while, uh, for a lot of years. He comes in, and he just gets up really high, as we can see here in the replay. Um, the huck comes out, and it's a little ill-advised, but he, he reads it well. He knows exactly where he wants to go, and he gets up high and gets that disc. Top gun in possession now. Thompson has it. He's looking deep, looking, and he finds Pat Ryan catch Roseanne at the goal line. Catch Roseanne now. Looking for some movement and a great grab there by Emily Noel de C. It's 12 6, Top Gun. And we see uh, on that play uh, um, Ryan Katz showing off what he's got. Uh, he really has a speedy cut there for the Huck. And as we see here on replay, uh, he, and he just has all the patience in the world. And he decides to throw a push pass in a final game, which is something that uh, not every player would try, let me tell you. Every goal. This half has been scored by Top Gun. They led it 8-6 at the break, and it's now 12-6-4. Actually make that five consecutive goals for Top Gun. They're running away. You could almost say uh, the Club de Musclé is in the danger zone here, would you not, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Kenny Loggins when you need him? <laughs> Actually, the Club de Musclé should feel the need for speed <laughs> at this point trailing by six that disc goes out so it'll come out to the brick and outside the shadow of their goal line Le Club de Mousclé have done very very little offensively here in this second half and now they're going to have to play great defense the rest of the way if they want to stay in this one. Jean-Francois Bougon. Allery. Allery down. Just too far for Sam Zuga. Great effort laid out trying to get to it, but just beyond his outstretched fingers. It's a great play here just to keep it in bounds. And he comes back in, he checks the disc, and then he puts it right away. You know that the Club de Musclé is trying to score quick, and it's just too far for the receiver. Warwick finds an open man, and they go for the huck once again. Thierry Bergeron to God knocks it away, but almost gave Bergeron a second opportunity at it. And it's interesting there because... Uh, Bergeron had the space and he didn't really read that disc very well. He had to move more into the middle of the field and he let the taller Duga kind of come in and make him make a play where he wasn't comfortable. And a foul means the disc is coming all the way back. So Gordon Warwick and Top Gun get it back after what was effectively a turnover. Yeah, this is where uh, it doesn't look like it's a contested foul just because the players are not talking to the observer. They're talking, he's talking to his own defense there. Um, everyone has to go back to the spot where they were, and then when they check the disc in, it'll be like a do over uh, because the player was fouled in the throw. And they try the exact same play. Bergeron running underneath it, lays out, can't get it. And we saw in both those throws that the disc was really tailing into the middle of the field, and uh, Bergeron's really having a tough time getting a good read on that. And Le Club de Mousclé going for a huck of their own, just off the fingers of Allery. And Warwick gets it back. Moves it back into the middle for L'Esperance. L'Esperance drops it for Laura Ferris. Ferris. 
Misses Bergeron with the pass. And now the Club de Mousclay look to answer quickly. Here's Allery. Down the field into the hands of Patrice Juno Genet. Now he has to wait for some support. This would be a big goal into the hands of Lisa Pacheco Brusso. Her first appearance of the game, and she gets a goal. Just uh, quite a back and forth point there, but as we can see here in the replay, it's a great hook, and, and uh, he makes a great play to keep it alive. And then just he plays in the shorter mark, and he just uses his height just to step around and just throw an easy break. So Pacheco Russo from Patrice Uno Genet, and it's now 12 7. And boy, did Le Club de Mousclay ever need that point! They really did. It's not just even a, a scoreboard thing, it's a momentum thing at this point because before that, uh, Top Gun had taken the first four points this half as well as the last point of last half. And they really need to start chipping away at that lead as it is getting late here in the game. Top Gun will get the disc back. And you see the players lining up doing whatever they can to keep their hands warm and this is when the disc gets really difficult to catch it's cold their hands are cold difficult to feel it especially because uh it's like the handlers that are here are trying to put as much uh spin and as much power on their disc as they can because they want the disc to fly true to where they want it to go uh, and when your hands are freezing and people are throwing lasers at you it's really hard to to keep making those plays with the players here um, some of them have gloves, some of them have long sleeves. It's just whatever they can wear to keep warm and be able to run at the same time. Ryan Castro is the only player for Top Gun out there wearing gloves. And I don't see anybody on Le Club de Mousclay wearing gloves. That's quite, uh, it's quite um, telling of their team. Like they're not, uh, a lot of them are not wearing long clothing, be it pants, be it long sleeves or anything like that. So they're obviously not too bothered here by the cold. Oh, right into the hands of Eric Shear on a beautiful huck from Mark Thompson. So we actually see that throw. Um, it goes up, and it's great. It's a great throw. It really leads the cutter. But it's interesting to see that that throw actually comes up into what's essentially triple coverage. And he's able to sort of, he's able to chip and throw it around all three defenders, even though they're all three of them are within 10 yards of the catch. 13 to 7. Top Gun just two points away from a Godzilla championship. We see Eric Shearer here on the camera. Uh, he's been very active, especially in the last sort of last five points, maybe the second half, because he's actually come out and he's had some legs that maybe some of the other players do not. Le Club de Mousclay in tough here, trailing by six. 45 minutes left on the clock on the hard cap but it would appear Corey Boucher that we're not going to need it <laughs> uh, no and it's it's almost better to see games go to score uh, rather than to time just because that's one thing that's that's interesting about ultimate is you could play uh, to a point cap rather than just time but it's also interesting to see because generally that means that the teams are playing pretty well and the offense is uh, rolling pretty good Nice little flip on the give and go to Bourgon. Bourgon inside for Dugo. Samuel Dugo. Little flip over. Bourgon has to reach for it. Finally gets it. Throws it into the end zone through the hands of Lisa Pacheco Brusso. And if you're uh, Le Club de Muscle at this point, that's that's a real backbreaker because you had a really good chance to score, especially catching that wide open on the break side and just a really untimely drop there for Le Club de Muscle. Thibault moves that up for Amélie Noël de Tsi. Little hammer over the top, and Daphne Ellison may have interrupted the concentration of Evelyn Massicott. That's one of those uh, we call a, a ghosty because you don't actually get a you don't actually get a hand on the disc, but it's enough to make the player make the mistake. Oh, a great feed there from Marie Michelle Cote and a drop in the end zone by Francois Rodrigue. He's never going to find an easier disc to catch. And I think that's one uh, 
one he'll be seeing tonight when he goes to bed because it was unfortunately such an easy play. And again, the Club de Musclay really needs these goals to claw their way back into this game. Here's another jump ball, another defensive play there from Patrice Junot Genet. Juga. Forced back for Daphne Ellison. Ellison. Bruno Genet. Into the middle for Rodrigue. Francois Rodrigue. Over the top into the hands of Patrice Bruno Genet. He's going into the end zone. And the grab is made by Samuel Zgo, and it's now 13-8. Top gun ahead. And that's a that's exactly what the Club de Musclay really needed there is they really needed to come out with that point. That point really became um, a bit of a a bit of a slobber knocker because they kept trying to go both ways and they kept um, falling short on some sort of unfortunate turnovers. And Club de Musclay is able to just kind of get that disc, move it to a break, and then move it quickly to the break side to score. And to go pretty much wide open in the end zone, it was just a matter of getting him the disc. And finally, Patrice Nogenet was able to find him. And he picked up his second assist of the game to go along with a goal. But going to have to get more offensive production from everybody on this Le Club de Musclay roster. If they want to stay in this one, they're chipping away. The lead was six. It's now five. And if they can get a couple of good defensive turnovers, it may be interesting. Yeah, this will be uh, this should be a really exciting point because at this point, Le Club de Musclay has to kind of shorten their roster and really put uh, maybe their top ten players in the field um, for the rest of the game. And now we're going to see a really exciting D-line here and see if they can get a turnover and maybe get some offense out of their D-line here. And that goes out, so it'll come out to the 40-yard line, which is the 20-yard line. The 20-yard line being the goal line here on the marked football field here at Gigi's Field. Uh, yeah, and it's interesting because a lot of these teams have had some really good hucks, but they're really having trouble keeping those pulls in bounds. And it's something to let your opponent set up really well on offense as well as gain a lot of yards in terms of field position. All the way back for Thompson. Thompson now flips that out, finds the open man, and gets the disc back. Flips it over for Ryan katz Thompson. Thompson looking into the end zone, and a nice defensive play, but oh. a better effort. Number 16, Alex Demers got a hand on it, but it was almost picked up by the trailer, number 54, Lauren Ellis. Um, and that's just a really great uh, example of Lauren's um, gamesmanship. She's really looking to win this game, and she's not willing to give up, even if it's what looks to be a sure D. And here's another turnover by Le Club de Musclay. And Mark Thompson directing traffic. Thompson into the end zone. Not close on the goal line for Emily Noel de Tilly. Little flip hammer over the top. In and out of the hands of Hugo Drouet. He had it and dropped it. As we can see here, uh, she kind of waits and then she points to the space. She knows where he wants him to go. And he goes and he just can't quite make the catch. Alex Demers right there as well. Defensively. And Frederick Allery. Now, for Le Club de Musclay, for Yannick Boulay. Boulay back for Allery. These are the two offensive catalysts as Lefebvre goes all the way down for Demers. Can't find Demers, can't find Sonia LaBelle. And it's another turnover by Le Club de Musclay. And unfortunately, um, this is exactly what Club de Musclay did not want because this is getting to the point where it's been a long point now. Um, these are a lot of players that they're going to want to have play the rest of the game, and they're not really going to be able to do that uh, because they're going to have to spend so much time on the field here scoring this point. Emily Noel de Tsi. Bergeron all the way down into the hands of 
Ellis. Looks like we got a pick called here. It was really messy around Lauren there. Uh, everybody just kind of seemed to want to run in circles around her rather than actually setting up to cut. And that's where you get the pick call, and that's where the defense now gets to set up and be in a really good spot. Top gun, six yards out. All the way back for Ryan Katz Roseanne. The hammer into the end zone. Bergeron can't grab it. They've had opportunities to finish this one off, Corey, but just coming up empty. And as we see here on the replay, Dan, uh, he knows the play he wants, he throws the throw he wants, and his cutter just can't quite get a good hand on this disc. It just sort of spins out of his hand. Well, in football terms, that was a catchable ball, so you'd call him a lineman. <laughs> or you, the coach would be putting some stick -em on his hands when he gets off the field next. Oh, that's illegal. <laughs> Fred Boletnikov made that one famous. <laughs> and here come Le Club de Muscle. <laughs> Who's there to break it up? Thompson easily. And that's a, an odd play from the Club de Muscle for a team that's uh, at this point really desperate for those goals. They had both those players kind of stand still and wait for that disc to come into them rather than attacking the disc, which is what they needed to do there to uh, negate Mark Thompson's defense. Bergeron. Looking for the forehand. Sharp pass into the hands of Drouin. Drouin finds Katz Roseanne. Roseanne back out for Drouin. Drouin down the sideline into the hands of Ellis. Ellis looks to go the forehand. Forced back for Ryan Katz Roseanne. Thompson. Thompson. Ellis. Ellis throws it away. Allery just won't say die for Le Club de Muscle. Uh, that's a timeout there from Yannick. Um, just because at this point, uh, they've, they've been trying to trade these hucks, they've been trying to trade these little throws, and they've been throwing a lot away uh, on both sides. I think it's a smart call here because this way the Club de Muscle, uh, who really needs his point, will be able to take their time, set up their offense, maybe get on the same page with a few of their cutters, and hopefully really take it to Top Gun for the rest of this point. Will the set plays in their offense be able to uh, break up this four in the cup, that four in the cup defense that Top Gun has been employing successfully the entire evening? Um, there won't be a set play that will get them out of it. It'll have to be a lot of just patience and really good sort of good leading throws on the part of the handlers. Um, that's part where I think they have a bit of an edge in terms of they have a little bit more experience, but they still have that speed from those handlers. And let's see if they can work their way out of that. I think it would be really interesting. I think it would be a really good call right now for Top Gun to put that zone back up. Time ticking away. Top Gun dominating this second half, leading the second half five to two. They led at the break, eight six, and just two points away now from a Godzilla championship. Little flip out, and again, Allery down, and. Did he turn an ankle? I don't think Mark Thompson is the type of player to push off. It looks like he's favoring his right ankle. And that's uh, one of the unfortunate things. It's nice to play on turf for a lot of reasons, but sometimes you do get those snags, uh, and it's not a very forgiving ground uh, because it is very rigid, and if you kind of get your ankle going the wrong way, even if you just get tangled up with a player, um, sometimes it can uh, be a fairly serious injury. And this is what they're playing for, the Godzilla Championship. And one of the interesting things about this trophy is that the team that wins it gets to put something on the trophy. Yeah, it's one of the... Uh, I had mentioned earlier in the broadcast about how Okiwa really has a, a, quite a storied background. But it's interesting because it's not as widespread as you think it would be. It's not super broadcast. Um, and that's one of the things, I think, that makes the Godzilla Trophy... Uh, so important for a lot of these these uh, teams is that 
they get to kind of leave more than just a little plaque on it. They get to leave their mark on the trophy as well. And if we get another look at the trophy again during a break, we'll uh, show you some to some of the additions to the trophy. And another foul called. So the disc will come back. No, it's going to turn over. So that's a uh, what they called there was a, a, tur a turnover on stall. So that means she counted to stall 10 before the disc was released. Uh, and then because of the play, it goes back and it gets tapped in for the other team. Here's Yannick Boule. Boule into the hands of Sonia LaBelle. And another stoppage. And it looks as if Emily Noel de C.E. has hurt her ankle. That's four injuries in this one three ankles and a shoulder and especially with these long points it's really um the team with a fewer injuries and the team with the more players in the field is really taking advantage of the fact that a lot of these players have been tired and now um, they get to have fresh players out there so it'll be interesting to see what happens for the rest of this one boulet spins that around for lefebvre philippe lefebvre Lefebvre looking into the end zone for LaBelle and sails on her, but she comes down with it. Sonia LaBelle with her fourth goal of this 2017 Godzilla Championship gets Le Club de Musclet back within four. And uh, she did it with, she paid a little bit of a price to score that goal, uh, which I'm sure she is happy to pay because they really need points right now. But she is favoring that hip where she got hit coming off. Uh, after she made the catch, the other player, as we see here in the replay, she follows it. She kind of takes it a little bit later than expected, and the other player comes and bumps in with her. Pat Lesperance. Pat Lesperance. Yeah, and he's uh, immediately apologetic. He's checking right away to make sure she's okay. Uh, just really great sportsmanship from Pat Lesperance right there. Well, the disc belongs to anybody when it's in the air. Yeah, and that's a, that's, that's a testament, that play right there, to show how much these players want it. Even though it's not their, uh, their mark, even though it's sort of to the complete other side of the field, we see Pat Lesperance run quite a way to go and try and make a play on that disc. 13-9. It was 12-6 at one point, a six-point advantage. Le Club de Musclet has chipped away. Good defense, some mistakes by Top Gun has allowed them to get back in as well. They've really kind of looked away from their long game, uh, those deep hucks the last couple points. And we haven't really seen Dave Milks on the field who's been throwing a lot of their uh, bigger throws as we get an offsides call here uh, against Club de Musclet on the pull. Um, and with Dave Milks not on the field, it seems like it's shortened their uh, game a little bit just because they, they're looking for those shorter throws. And potentially that's where they're having those issues is not uh, having the ability to stretch the field. The gap was two at the half. It's now, it was as many as six, now it's four. And Top Gun will get the disc back and see if they can get some offense going. And the disc goes into the end zone. Tsebo moves that up and again gets it back. Again, trying to score quickly. Eric Shear gets it. Shear stops at the goal line. Now waits for some help. Little flip over, and it goes away. And Shear would more than likely like to have that one back. He had about six more seconds on his stall count and he just tossed that one away. That's uh, one of those plays that we call the conservation of greatness. He makes such a nice cut downfield. He tracks the disc really well. He goes up and gets it. And then, of course, with that sort of out of breath and patience, he just sort of throws that disc away. Justin Blair, he's looking deep. That one nowhere near the intended target, Patrice Uno Genet. Sheer had a better cut for that disc than Genet did. As well, you see, oh, Jim Robinson bringing the disc back in here, and we'll get the disc back in play. Jim Robinson, uh, an AUDL referee as well. 
Yeah, he referees for the uh, the Ottawa Outlaws, which is the local AUDL team here. And so that means he's seen a lot of games. Uh, he's also observed a lot of games, so this is nothing new for him. Christian Marceau, the other observer, and certainly no stranger to championship games as well. Exactly, and she uh, was the executive director of OQ for a few years, so she really knows what uh, what the people put into this game in terms of both players and volunteers. Um, so she's really appreciative of games like this. Top Gun needs to get their focus back. Threw that one away. Daphne Ellison. Ellison all the way across the field. Back into the hands of Patrice Uno Genet. Rodrigue. Marie Michel Cote. Sam Dugor. Dugor throws that one into the hands of Top Gun. And back they come again. Here's Gordon Warwick. Warwick looking downfield for Laura Ferris, and he'll wait to get some support. Throws that one out for Mark Thompson. Thompson for Tebo. Back to Tebo. Tebo into the end zone. This one sailing. And it's batted away by Justin Blair. Just hung up there as Evelyn Massacot Dagenet was waiting for it. On that play there, as we see a timeout here called, um, on that play there, Top Gun really needs to sort of just take that extra breath and relax. They're in the driver's seat in this one, especially on offense. They need to kind of take the time to be calm. They want to keep their legs for the rest of the game, and they really want to push this one through. Uh, and that's just a little bit of recklessness from Denny. It's, it's a good look, but he doesn't see the extra defender come in and get that disc. Just as an aside, Top Gun hasn't scored for 18 minutes. Um, yeah, and that's a, a, a testament to what Le, uh, the Club de Musclé has been able to do here on defense. They've really been able to make a good stand and really sort of tighten up their marks to make sure that Top Gun is making tougher throws, and they seem to be having a little bit more trouble with the defense that the Club de Musclé is throwing at them. So another timeout here, 26 35 gone or remaining on the scoreboard clock 86 87 minutes has elapsed in this one and you can see a few of the players are starting to show that they've been playing for 87 minutes um, especially a couple that have actually been sort of more on the sideline lately than on the field but in this case we'll see because a lot of these are, people are great athletes and we'll continue to see their speed throughout the rest of the game Justin Blair that one sailed into the hands of Dugas. Little flip back for Blair. Almost broken up by Warwick into the hands of Bruno Genet and plays called. Gordon Warwick seems to be upset with something. I'm not sure what the play call is here because Denis Tebow does not seem happy with this call either. It's gone back to thrower, and we have Jim Robinson, the observer, who seems to be listening to the argument of both the players. So it's coming in. It's a contested foul. It's coming in on stall six. Blair forced to get rid of it. You know, Genet comes up with it. Nice forehand through the middle to Francois Rodrigue. Rodrigue back for Uno Genet, and that one got away from him. He just didn't get enough on it. That middle finger, you need that on those forehand tosses if you want to get any distance on it. And it just slid away from him. Nice play by Shear to keep it alive. Shear back for Thompson. Mark Thompson. And a foul called. So we have a foul called here on the throw. It'll be interesting to see um, the person on the mark, who's number six, Francois Rodrigue, reacts immediately from that Eric Shear throw. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm assuming it's a contested foul. 
Looks like it's coming in on stall eight. So it'll be a contested down call. He thought he stalled him down. And they see them playing here so that Mark Thompson does not get the disc. Shear gets rid of it. And that's broken up easily by Daphne Ellison. Ellison. Moves that up. Uno Genet. Ellison. Nice grab on the far side by Marie Michel Cote. Here's Dugo. Sam Duga back for Cote. Cote. Rodrigue for Blair. Blair. Duga. Duga. For Cote. Good disc movement by Le Club de Musclé. Rodrigue. Rodrigue throws it away. Led. Number 78. Daphne Ellison just a little too much. And the disc goes back to Top Gun. And this point's been going on for quite a while, and you're kind of starting to see it a little bit in the players' um, fatigue on defense. And that's something else we saw there, too, is a little bit of fatigue on offense, I think. He just kind of gives the disc. Ferris has it! What a great grab! By Laura Ferris, calls the timeout five yards out. Wow, what an effort. That's such a great grab. Um, and it, she really sticks with the disc. It's really tough because it's sort of trailing in over her head. As we see the throw comes out from Mark Thompson. It's a great flick. And she kind of has to go a little bit back to the way she was running and track it. And then she gets it on the second effort here. Now what Top Gun really has to do here is they've got to play it smart. They've got to, got to come in with, with a play that is going to get them this point. They haven't scored now for 23 minutes and they need a goal. They have to get that to overcome a little bit of a hurdle because now it may be at the point where you get into the psychological battles in sport where you've got a fear of winning because you don't want to make the mistake that could cost your team a championship. So you play a more defensive style and you allow other teams to get back into the game. Yeah, exactly. It's like the equivalent of going into a shell. You don't really want to take any risks because you're afraid that you're going to turn it over. You have that kind of in your head. And we could see in the huddle there, number 44, Ryan Katz-Rosine, really taking charge of that huddle. And you could see him kind of trying to rally the troops a little bit, get some of those, get a little bit of last energy here so they can score this point, which has been a long point, and then hopefully get a good line out for the next line. Ferris for Warwick. Warwick back out. Thompson. Looking for a cutter, finds his man, and Thibault finally gets Top Gun one goal away from a Godzilla championship. And that's uh, Denny Thibault, the uh, import from the East Coast. He has been a little bit quiet this game. He's been a little bit more handling than striking. Normally he's a bit more of a striker, but we see him coming up big when his team needs him most right there. The third assist for Mark Thompson to go with one score. And Thibault's second point of the evening as well gets Top Gun back within a goal of a 2017 Godzilla Championship. And we see uh, pretty much most of those players who are just on the field for both sides either sitting on the bench or getting near the bench because that was such a long point. They're so tired. They're all looking for a lot of water. Even though there was a couple timeouts, it still takes its toll on you such a long point. And 23 minutes between scores for Top Gun. Not something that we saw for most of this game up until probably the 20 minute mark of this second half. They were just scoring at will. Yeah, especially uh, even both ways. I find that the play has slowed down a lot. There's been a lot longer points. As you mentioned, 23 minutes in between scores, but. Le Club de Musclé was not really able to ratchet up too much pressure and really get those scores back even though it was 23 minutes in between goals. Low pass into the hands of Sonia LaBelle. And we see that zone once again from Top Gun really wanting Club de Musclé to play on this side as we see even a wide open throw there from Phil Lafay was difficult. Boulay had to go down low to pick it up. He's got the disc now. Here's Boulay back to the outside. Flipped back into the hands 
of the Club de Mousquet. Now they're going deep into the end zone and a great grab from Francois Allery and a bit of a selly there as well. As you can see, uh, it was a great throw from Phil Fever and just right to the back of the end zone. His cutter takes it really well. Uh, we see, just look at the patience. He sees it the whole time and he just throws over the entire pack. Um, we have the one defender there try and give it a shot, but he's just so open and he goes up so high to get the disc. He's trying to get a little bit of energy out of that spike and hopefully get his uh, D-line back out there because right now their back is against the wall. The score being 14-10 for Top Gun. Allery with his third goal. Lefebvre with his fourth assist. That combination worked very well as well as the combination of Sonia LaBelle and Yannick Boule a little earlier in this one. And then they started to work really well together and then Top Gun made a defensive adjustment and cut that off. Yeah, and I think we've seen a little bit, uh, we've seen the, the lack of, of energy and legs wear a little bit harder on the Club de Musclet rather than Top Gun. Top Gun seems to be able to keep putting a fresh seven out there, whereas the Club de Musclet seems a little bit more tired. Thompson. Warwick. Down low and another missed grab by Emily Noel de CE. She's back in there turning her ankle about 15 minutes ago, but she's back in on defense for Top Gun. Nice grab by Patrice Uno Genet. Little flip inside, good defensive play by Hugo Drouin, and the disc turns over once again. Now, they're looking downfield. Can Drouin catch up with it? No, he cannot. So we see a quick start here from Le Clou de Musclet. This is what they need. Pick up the disc and get it moving before Top Gun can really set a good defense here. Um, and it's that way they can take advantage of the, the poachers and the mismatches because the defense wasn't paying attention. There's a sailor. It goes, Drouin goes up and there's a contest for it. And injured on the play, number 16, Alex Demers. And observer Christian Marceau right there. You know both teams really want this. Yeah, and what you see, uh, as you can see in her right hand there, oh, sorry, uh, as we're cutting back to the play here, so it's really overthrown, and it really gives the defender a good spot to really get in there and get that disc. He has a right to that lane, and uh, it's unfortunate that the cutter's coming underneath. You see here give a blue card, which is a uh, sportsman-like, it's a warning against uh, not the individual player, which in this case is Hugo Drouin, but um, it's a warning to all of Top Gun. And she's probably cautioning the Club de Musclet as well. There's been a lot of contact with players uh, and receivers as they're going for the disc. It's a warning for now, and there could be a penalty coming later if they continue it. What's the penalty for a second blue card disqualification? Uh, for the blue cards, luckily, it's only yardage penalties um, because it's not aimed at a single player. It's usually uh, the team. So in this case, it's for being really aggressive on defense because they're really taking the body into the players as the players are going up uh, from the Club de Musclet or as they're trying to cut across. And that's what the observers don't want to see. They want they don't want to slow the game down. They want to keep the game moving and they want to keep it uh, a sportsman-like bout here. Tabo into the end zone! And it's good! Top Gun are the 2017 Godzilla champions on Tuesday, Thursday night play. Finally able to get past Le Club de Musclet in hand Le Club de Musclet, their first loss of the season. And it's unfortunate to see uh, a team's first and only loss of the season come in a game that's as big as Godzilla. You'd rather lose sort of in one of the weeks in the regular season. But uh, they came out to play, and we both had some really good teams here. Uh, one of the teams, unfortunately, had to lose. And it, Top Gun, even though they hit a bit of a roadblock there for a couple points, was able to sort of pull out the stronger performance overall. Player of the game, Corey Boucher. Player of the game, uh, if I was going to go on to the Club de Musclet, the red team, it would be number four, uh, Phil Lefebvre. He really drove a lot of their offense, and he uh, really put a lot of the deep shots that they ended up connecting on, which scored a lot of their points, especially early on. Uh, if I was to pick a player on white, it would probably be number 44, Ryan Katz-Rosen. 
Uh, we talked before the game. That was probably going to be my call for player of the game as well. He really is a dynamic player. He's got a lot of good throws, and he was able to throw himself out of a lot of bad situations that game. A great Tuesday, Thursday final here at Gigi's Field, and Top Gun finished second overall in their division on Thursday night. Come back and win the Godzilla Championship for 2017 with a 15-10 win over Le Club de Mousquet. For Corey Boucher and our entire Rogers TV crew, I'm Dan Mooney. Thanks so much for the company. So long from Gigi's Field. Pizza, proud supporter of local sports. Gabriel Pizza, home of the bigger, better pizza. 310-7777 or gabrielpizza.com.